Start streaming. Start music. Cool. <laughs> Hobbit's, Hobbit's finally got back to me. He'll be on in a minute. He should be on in a Hello. Oh, ah, you found us. Hello. Hobbit. You are here. Yeah. I, um, uh, I, well, hi. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is up with this Discord, the stupid thing? Uh, well, long story, isn't it? But, um, <laughs> yeah. It must be oh, you're not allowed to update. Yeah. You're, you're not allowed to send messages to because you're not a friend. No. Don't share a server, even though we do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Uh, oh well, who, who, who knows, eh? Who, uh, who knows, indeed. Oh, we've got we've got Ian back again for the. Uh, we've got Ian back again for the Enfield Poltergeist episode. Do you call it the Enfield Poltergeist, or is it the Enfield Haunting? Because that's what they call it in the film, don't they? The choice is yours, Enfield Poltergeist, Enfield Ghost, whichever you wish. So yeah. I like Poltergeist because that's uh, that's what it was. Or the or the Harry Enfield Poltergeist, which goes only me. Right, that's the um, <laughs> right, that's that's the that's that joke buggered. So <laughs> anyway. sure, am I stepping on your puns again? <laughs> yeah, Sorry, well, uh, yeah, it's happened before, so don't worry. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a common element of, a, of you, you coming on this podcast. Yeah, it takes me ages to think because I'm going to get ruined. <laughs> so. so, yeah, so we'll cover the Enfield case tonight. It should be good. Um, should be exciting. And we'll see what the case brings us and what we think of it. Oh, before I step on some more of your content, I do have a bit of a factoid about the Enfield haunting. Do you know why the Enfield haunting had um, our bugger? Who, who's that couple that were in the recent film? Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren. I do know of them. Um, their, their input was exaggerated, though. So, uh, but Do I you know, know what? I, I, fa I found out why that was. Do you know why? Because it appears whoever owns whoever owns the rights to Ed and, Ed and Lorraine Warren doesn't own the right to their big cases. <laughs> so basically, the only ones they can do stories about are, are stories that Ed and Lorraine are only tangentially um, involved in. No, yeah. Well, we shall find out later their input, but mm. uh, I think I think they, they it was sort of it sort of made it. They were big investigators of the case. But they only went mm. to the house twice and then were very interested. Mm. Right, so are you ready to take it away, Ian? Yeah, let's go. Let's uh, let's um, let us begin. So we've got that. There. So tonight we're going to uh, leave the realm of cryptozoology and probe the world of the supernatural. So let's tackle the unknown, the Enfield poltergeist. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. you're shitting yourself. <laughs> <now. Yeah. laughs> I have to. I have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> leave, leave the room if you're of a nervous disposition. Yeah. So anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, so in 1977, a family living in a small semi-detached house in Enfield, North London, experienced a number of violent paranormal disturbances that lasted for a year. In this time, levitations, moving objects, overturned furniture, and channeled voices were all witnessed by more than 30 people. This included residents, journalists, neighbours, and police officers. So let's have a look at uh, Enfield then, and just get a feel for the place. Yeah, that's Harry Enfield, isn't it? So that's yeah. the wrong. That's the wrong. Entry. I hate you. <laughs> that... You're not my real dad. I hate you. Yeah. 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 So that's ha that's Harry, Harry Enfield. But you've said you stepped on that one. Let's go yeah. to the next uh, next slide. Next slide. 
So there we go, Enfield Tube Station. So that's, uh, you know, they've got their own tube station. Let's have a little look at the next, uh, next image we have of Enfield. Let's have a look. That's a very much oh, olden days, Enfield, isn't it? It is. That's Enfield of the 60s. So, uh, yeah, nice quaint. Uh, I've only just got okay. the connection between the Enfield haunting and Harry Enfield. Yeah, well, <laughs> we both have the same name. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you've got to you've got to keep up. You've got to keep up. So, uh, <laughs> so oh, fat charts. That's the that's the that's the key to to it all. Yeah, so that's Enfield in the sixties. Nice place. Let's look at Enfield today. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Look at that, beautiful. Yeah. So that's what we've got. And those high rises. There. I actually used to live there too, as as well, uh, you know, a few years back. Yeah, I did Ooh. live in Enfield. Let's go and look at the um, the more upmarket area. Of oh, that's Enfield. nice. Yeah. Beautiful that is. Uh, that's the that's the posh area. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> cost you a fortune that property. Let's, uh, let's have another look at columns and, on that house, though. There are yes, and uh, <laughs> nice boarded up windows as well, which is a. Uh, is a plus in uh, Enfield. Let's have a look at the next slide and see. Uh, <laughs> let's meet. Let's meet. Let's meet the residents. Yeah, there we are. That's uh, beautiful Enfield. Enfield lass. Yep, there she is, smoking and pregnant. Let's Wayne go to the slob. next one. Yeah, there's Wayne there he and his sovereigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's hard, isn't he? Having his fag, having a yep. fag in his hat. Yeah. So that's. Uh, couple of the, the neighbours you'll encounter if you live in Enfield. Let's go to the next slide. Let's have a look at a Enfield social <laughs> social distancing in Enfield. Mm. Yeah, there they are. The family gathering. Is that is that a modern art in, in, in installation? Is it to the left of that bit, to the left of that bench? Looks like it, doesn't it? Some looks kind like, of, looks uh, like a Tracy Emin, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like there's some kind of a tent. And then... Uh, some kind of bottle and a bucket. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty surreal. Surrealism there. Let's go to the next slide and have a look at uh, have a look at some of the uh, <laughs> the younger generations of Enfield. Oh look, was he possessed? Yeah, there's his ectoplasm coming out there on the. Uh, <laughs> and he had no idea how he got home. He he was caught in a time uh, time slip. So he was one minute he was in the pub, and the next minute he was at home with a a kebab all down his front. So. <laughs> Let's just have one more look at Enfield. Let's just see the next slide, and then we'll we'll uh, tackle the case. There oh, we no, go. That, that looks uh, like Damien Hurst. That does. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, a nice installation there. So very artistic tale. Let's go to the next one and just quickly see the last uh, the last bit of Enfield, and then we'll move on to the uh, the case itself. Mm. Oh, looks like a bit of spontaneous combustion there. Yes, looks like it. Or either that or, or rioting and looting, which uh, is the order of the day now. So, yeah, so um, that's um, what we got then. So let's have a look at the, the house, the actual house that was uh, that was haunted. We'll go on to that one now and see what uh, we've got. There we go. Just your standard terrorist house there. I like the Rover at the front. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, is that a Rover? Yeah, yeah, it's an old Rover, isn't it? Went before Rover yeah. started to produce utter, utter rubbish. So... It's yeah, a nice so that's looking rover too. I Ooh. imagine it's not not a P five, but well, Maggie Thatcher liked those rovers. She made sure that she had some to uh, before they changed shape into that sporty <laughs> thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. But anyway, I've actually did pay. I did. I did go there because, I, as I said, I used to live near, not too far from there. So I did go there and have a look and see what was going on. Had a look. I got told to fuck off, but uh, <laughs> nice. But yeah, so I don't, yeah, yeah. That's what people do. So let's have a look at the, uh, let's see what what was going on at the time. <clears throat> so yeah, 47-year-old Peggy Hodgson lived at 284 Green Street. Uh, you're ahead of me there. Uh, oh, with well, her four I'm, children. I'm, yeah, okay. stick on that one. But uh, Well, you said, let, you said let's see, so I took that as a cue. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, All right. We'll, we'll go on that one. But anyway, yeah. 284 Green Street uh, with her four children. So a single mother and four children. So uh, some... So it was uh, Margaret, age 13, Janet, age 12, Billy, age 7, and John, age 11. So some good benefits to be got with those, isn't there? Four <laughs> kids. So, so yeah, so you should do you nicely. You don't have to fucking work. So anyway, Peggy was considered by those who knew her as a pleasant and conscientious person, overcoming financial 
insecurity to do the best for her children. Margaret was a serious and reserved child. Janet was lively and extroverted. Bit of a joker in the pack, that one. John was only home during the summer holidays as he boarded in a special school for Div kids. Billy suffered <laughs> severe speech defect, but was otherwise described as a typical young boy. So that's is the, the, is that's that the scientific, family. Is that a scientific term, Div kids? Um, no. The Wendy <laughs> house is the scientific term, isn't it? <laughs> the but, uh, yeah, we used to call it the, and we used to call them the A team as well. So, uh, <laughs> if we, and when we'd see that's them come, hmm, if we'd see them coming in school, we would sing the uh, the A team tune or hum it anyway. So, but anyway, let's move on. <clears throat> so this slide here, then. So on. we're going to start now with the actual um, the actual paranormal activity. So. Um, on the 31st of August, 1977, around 9.30 p.m., Janet and John heard a shuffling sound in their bedroom. Mrs. Hodgson came to their room to see what was going on, and the children said their beds were shaking up and down. Peggy thought they were larking about and gave them a good bollocking and told them to go back to sleep. <clears throat> the high... There. Janet complained to her mother that a chair in her bedroom was what was making the shuffling noise. So she moved the chair out of the bedroom and put it downstairs. She returned to the children's room and turned the light out. As soon as she did so, the shuffling sound started again. Immediately, she turned the lights back on to see what the children were doing, and they were in their beds, not moving at all. She turned the light off, and once again, the shuffling sound was heard. So something funny going on there. And the mother initially... Um, thought it was the kids mucking about, but was soon coming round to the idea that it was something else. You missed a, you missed an LMFAO uh, meta reference there, Ian. You could have done every day. I'm shuffling. Um, no, I've not. I've not heard of that song. Oh, right, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day I'm shuffling. <laughs> yeah, wasn't a big hit, was it, or was it? <laughs> I don't know. Who, who can tell anymore? Yeah. yeah, but anyway, so that's what was going on. Um, the sound was described as someone walking across the room in their slippers. Next came a knocking noise, and a chest of drawers moved about 18 inches from the wall. Mrs. Hodgson pushed the drawers back against the wall, to which the drawers moved again. She tried to push it back a second time, but this time the chest of drawers wouldn't move at all. So, yeah, so the spirit was uh, holding the, drawer down, the drawers down to... Uh, where they were, and Peggy could not move it. At this point, Mrs. Hodson took her children to the next-door neighbour, Vic and Peggy Nottingham, and their 20-year-old son. So, um, so yeah, so Vic, was, uh, Vic and um, Peggy were in the next house. So Vic's, Vic's semi, that was. It was uh, Vic had a semi, like, uh, next door to there. So. After hearing the Hodgson's account of what happened, the Nottinghams dismissed the story, but agreed to listen and see if they could hear anything. The knocking continued, and the Nottinghams began to hear the knocking noise. Vic said that it felt like the knocking noises were following him around the house. And then they called the police. So, um, so is that... That's how serious they were taking it. Let's uh, let's move on to the next slide and see the police. See the police. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's have yeah. a look at the police. Eh? Yeah, there they are. Eh? Crack unit. Uh, it is. That's the guy in the middle who makes the noises, isn't it? The uh, the uh, the effects and the like. So, two two police arrived. They wrestled the poltergeist to the floor and they put their knee on its neck for eight minutes. And that's. <laughs> And it's after this event, is, this is why now we've got um, the poltergeist group, Ghost Lives Matter, but uh, they don't matter <laughs> because they, they're dead anyway, are they? You can't kill a ghost because it's dead anyway. So, you know, they're just making something out of nothing there. But uh, but when the police did arrive, it, they immediately started to hear the knocking. They checked the walls, the pipes, and the attic, but nothing was found to explain the knockings. The police persons also witnessed a chair move across the living room floor unaided. They checked the chair, but could find no evidence of tomfoolery. And these experiences actually went into the police report. So, uh, so even the police were um, taken in. If it, was a, if it was a hoax, they were taken in, but it might have been real. So let's have a look at the next slide and see what we got there. So let's see what we have coming up. 
So yeah, that's uh, Animal House. That's another goofball comedy like Police Academy. So we'll just move on a move on a slide. Yeah, just a just a. I prefer that film to Police Academy. But uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. So what we've got here is the family being witnessed um, witnessing poltergeist activity. So they're watching the activity of the poltergeist. And whoever had the camera decided to take a picture of the family being shocked by the poltergeist rather than the poltergeist itself. So, you know, if I was there, I would have. Yeah, I don't know why that was uh, that was that. But uh, yeah, the guy on the on the right, I'd like to ask him why the long face. But, uh, <laughs> he's a, he's a, uh, I was going to say the picture of two zombies there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Udo yeah, so Card seen... Game says in chat, he says Enfield is a high radon area. <laughs> he, just thought he'd, he just thought he'd let us know about that. Yeah. Um, if I heard w- noises coming from the wall, uh, I'd be bricking it. Yeah. Yeah. Because wall... if I heard noises coming from the wall, I'd be bricking it. Because the wall is made of bricks. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hobbit, that was a bit vague. Yeah, that was Hobbit okay. Keep up. Yeah. So the shuffling sound. What could have explained the shuffling sound? What do we reckon on that? That's interesting, isn't ghost. it? Ghost. Mm, the ghost. The ghost <laughs> of a poker player. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> oh, it was that could cowboy that died. That was holding the dead dead man's hand. Could have made a joke about him. Um, I'm not sure. Really, the kid. I don't know. Anyway, what we'll do, I think what we'll do. So that's the first. Um, so I said this is the initial poltergeist uh, activity that uh, that they experienced. What we've just run through there. Uh, well, what well we'll do, Bill Hickok held the held the dead man's hand. Did he? Yeah, that's, I think that's where yeah. the spades uh, thing comes from, doesn't it? Yes, something along somewhere around the Wild West. Anyway, isn't it? They were always gambling and the like. But I think. What we'll do is um, uh, we'll have a look. Let's meet the family. Let's meet the actual uh, the Hodgsons. Let's get a sort of a feel of what kind of people they were. Let's go to the next slide and see. Have a look at them. Okay, there they are. There's some lovely haircuts there, aren't they? Yeah, a few pudding bowls. Yeah. Uh, do you think the mum? Do you think the mum does the does the does the hair herself? Yeah, more than likely. Basin on the head in the garden and just snip what's around with the, the... What's with the Dutch tilt on the image? Were they doing a, like a Rolling Stones cover or something? <laughs> yeah. They got... David Bailey took the photos. Yeah. So. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, they're a bit, a bit chavvy, aren't they? So, you know, I'm not sure about them. Teeth on, fucked that, off. teeth on that poor <laughs> other girl at the back there. Well, I'll have a closer look at that in a bit. But, um, you know, if... if uh, if I knew that family, I'd tell my kids not to just 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 avoid them. Don't bring them around and you know, getting getting involved in shoplifting, skiving from school, stuff like that. So Breaking let's have another incident. yeah, smoking draw, all that. Anyway, let's have another look at them. Let's see. There we go. Look at them there. Is it gyro day? Yeah, <laughs> not. Uh, so there, that's the kids there. The one in the middle is the man, is the one who was possessed uh, the most. You know, she she experienced most of the uh, the poltergeist activity. Let's go and have a look at the next slide and let's have another look at them. Let's see this? what they. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, bloody, yeah. Got a nice line in house coats, haven't they? Yeah, and slippers. I yeah. bet she wears this. She wears the slippers to the shop. She doesn't care, does she? Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically what we're looking at, we're looking at, basically we're looking at a, a typical estate family, aren't we? You know, there is, uh, let's go on to the next one and have a look at the, look at them. Have a look at what they, uh, what they got yeah, there. There we go. Is she, is she wearing them teeth in for a horse, is she? Uh, I don't know. She's uh, something, maybe she's possessed by a horse. Maybe that's what the ghost was. And <laughs> manifested itself through her teeth. Shergar sure, wants his teeth back. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there we go. That's Benefit Street for you. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at them. You know, just we just got to run through this just to get an idea of, yeah, you know, here we are. The, the Jeremy Kyle show with this. So that's what that looks like there. on the left hand yeah. side. That looks like she's got a poster of Fred West on the wall. <laughs> yeah, they got a good line in posters there. Mm. 
But yeah, I'm not sure who that is. But, uh, Shaking Stevens, something like that. I'm not so sure. But oh, that'd be uh, oh seventies. That'd be the other one. Oh, right? the one that's like Alvin, Shaking Alvin Stardust. Alvin, that's it. Alvin Stardust. Yeah. 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 Right, okay, what we'll do then, uh, so there we go, we know what kind of scum they are, we know what kind of family they are, so uh, <laughs> let's move on and look at the hauntings, let's go to the next slide and have a look, okay, September 1977, as we were going to look at here. We've so got a Lego brick. There we go, the relevance of that will be coming to, coming to the story now, I'm going to run over, so September 1977, over the next few days Lego bricks and glass marbles began to be thrown around the house by an unknown force this was witnessed by both the Hodgson and the Nottingham families that's, uh, that's the next door neighbour as we run through Vic with the semi, Vic semi uh, Vic Nottingham his father picked up one of the thrown marbles and found it to be burning hot so it's obviously some kind of uh, heat transfer going on in the haunting and mrs nottingham contacted the daily may uh, daily mirror sorry to uh, report on the services disturbances uh, no doubt a, a small fee was involved there so uh, the following day journalist douglas Prince, a photographer and a photographer graham morris visited the house and witnessed lego bricks flying around the room one hit graham morris in the head which caused bruising the peer returned to the newspaper, convinced that there was a story to be had. Senior reporter George Fallows and photographer David Thorpe visited the house on September the 7th. Upon hearing the knocking himself, Fallows contacted the Society for Psychic Research. So, um, yeah, so, you know, it sounds to me that, uh, you know, um, there is something there. You know, all these people come in, reporters, etc. Police, of course, you know, not easily fooled. Um, then, um, then um, you know, this is uh, looking good at this stage. So, so then, the Society of Psychics Research is one of the uh, oldest paranormal, paranormal investigative bodies in the world. Morris Gross and Guy Playfair of the Society were to carry out the investigation. And Guy Lyon Playfair, isn't it? He likes to he likes to put the lion in, doesn't he? Guy lion play for, all the stuff I've read. I've already uh, he, yeah. he likes to add the lion bit in, doesn't he? Is a bit of a flair, I think. I I haven't actually read anything by him, but um, but it, what is he is he uh, is he is he sort of a well known um, psychic um, researcher? I think he I think he is. I think he was very well. I think he's just basically. I think ever since he's just dined out on this case. I think. <laughs> yeah, Morris Gross as well. And the yeah. first, the first time, the first time I, I knew of him, we'll come on to short. But uh, but um, let's cover a bit of. Uh, let's look at Morris Gross. Let's go to the next case and have a good look at him. Let's uh, see sorry. the next. The next. Sorry, the next slide, not case. That's a cracking. Slide. That's a cracking tash he's got there, isn't it? There he is, a big one. It's a bit of a sex case as well, doesn't he? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what. Uh, Yes. So that's, uh, in the tash. that's Lego there. That's Lego. We want Morris. Get him uh, back. It'll cut. It's like a standard Lego brick. Oh my God, I think it's a big no, one. I think it? it's a box. Oh. You put your Legos in. Yeah, that would explain the carry handles on the side yeah. then. Yeah. I preferred uh, stickle bricks. That was uh, an alternative. Plus the colour looks wrong somehow. <laughs> but anyway, let's look at this guy. So gross. He was a successful inventor, and he created the rotating um, advertising board. So that was his work. When you see that at a, at a bus stop, the advert changes, doesn't it? That was he invented that. So he made a few quid on that. But um, his interest in the paranormal phenomena had been awakened by a series of meaningful coincidences that followed the death of his daughter in 1976, um, who died in a motorcycle accident. So, you know, obviously. He's a clever man, obviously, made a few quid as well, but he's taken in by this. And you can see a sort of similarity. That's, that's with what they this. went with. Did you see the Sky um, drama, dramatization of it? They kind of le lent quite heavily on Morris Gross trying to kind of um, mm. bring his daughter back through the relationship with, uh, is it Janet was the focus, wasn't she? Yes. And it's. Uh, and the same thing happened with Conan Doyle. The same, uh, you know, he was obviously, uh, he was a doctor. He made lots of money through his books and that. But he believed in spiritualism. And, um, 
and his son was killed in one of the wars and his wife died as well quite quite young so and you know obviously if there was a way that he could contact these people he's going to be taken in by it and uh, also the theories as well wasn't it he yeah he thought that was real and he thought houdini what well, he thought houdini was um, real as well the magic he was doing and even they were friends and houdini would tell him that it's a trick but he wouldn't have it he said no you're magic you're real you know so it's uh <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did. He... So, um, so there. That's the sort of person we're dealing with here. So, so let's um, let's go go to the next uh, slide. Let's have a look a bit. Look at Gross in action in the house himself. Let's uh, go there. Let's look. Starsky and Hutch on the wall there. Starsky and Hutch. I think I've been trying to look at. I think there's the Bay City Rollers above his right shoulder. Is there yeah. not? Yeah, that looks. Yeah, I'd. And, uh, yeah, because they've got the right... scarves on, haven't they? Yeah. Is that and his right stand behind? I don't know. Well, I, I, if it seventies, no, it like wouldn't. A, no, it wouldn't be, would it? In the seventies. Yeah. But if it is Princess Diana, that's a that's a car crash waiting to happen, isn't it? So uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to the next slide before uh, before we get too tied up in the before royal we family. come across an Uno in a tunnel. Yeah, this is a good one. The next one. So this is this is where I first saw Morris Gross. Ali G was a. Uh, um, interviewing him. Oh, I and, did not uh, know that. Yeah, there he is there. And that was my first exposure to the guy. Let's go to the next slide and have a quick look what we've got there. Oh, There's Ali G with Trump. This is the, he interviewed him as well. Just uh, threw that in. So, there we go. I remember that, though Trump wasn't having it. He wouldn't... He wouldn't uh, <laughs> He was saying, "Can we? Can we get rid of this guy?" Yes, yes, yes. So, anyway, so anyway, let's go. Let's move forward. This is the popular. The, the back to the back to the um, Poltergeist case. Let's go forward a, a slide. There we are. It was big news at the time, and uh, the papers did get get hold of the story, and uh, the Mirror especially because they had reporters. Reporters. I like, I like on the, the way case. the paper isn't allowed to say Lego. I saw toy bricks uh -huh. go shooting across the room. <laughs> Yeah, of advertising. <laughs> yeah, not allowed to say Lego, are they? Look at that. Daily Mirror, 7p. Well, it's not a bad bargain, isn't it? Yeah. Back in the day when such things were respected, and Blue Peter would say sticky-backed plastic. Yeah. And and they would teach you to make that thing at Christmas with coat hangers, tinsel, and candles. And, that sounds uh, like a good mix to me. That sounds like a good mix for a house fire, and I yeah. think in some cases it was. <laughs> but yeah, that's the, what's that with it? How I Found Shaw's On Dead, Sun Dead by Jane the Squatter Girl. Uh, there we are. That's what was going on in 1977. Yeah. Let's go on and let's have another quick look at the next slide. Another, this one is from another paper. Girls hurled from their beds in House of Terror. So, yeah, you know, it sells papers, doesn't it? So it's pretty good stuff. But when it says remote That's control cameras, it means um, regular cameras, not uh, video cameras. Yeah, these, well, yeah, it's a bit... That's probably the most disappointing thing about the case. They had these remote control cameras, which were just still cameras, so they wouldn't take... They would just take image, a single image, which is, you know, a film of a poltergeist is what you want, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, that's... Uh, Let's go on to the next one. They did take, you know, there was poltergeist activity and a photo was taken uh, by Graham Morris. And uh, let's have a look at the next photo and see what uh, what we've got there, the next slide. So, yeah. So there was some poltergeist activity going on and a photo was taken, and uh, but the poltergeist didn't turn up. What you've got is... Or did it? That what's, what's that behind her head? Has she got a... Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? It looks like yeah, she's got some kind of... Looks, it looks like, um, you know, the thing that old, the old people put in the back of chairs? It looks like one of them. Because yeah. it looks a bit frilly when you look at the right-hand side near her head. Yeah, or it looks like the sort of thing you'd wear in a bakery. Yeah. Or or a white a white Tommy Cooper hat. Sure. But obviously she's in shock there. She's going, oh shit! Look at the photo guys. I'm worried. But then the two guys in the back, look at them. They just Simon stood, stood there casual, you know. So <laughs> you know, yeah, they don't, they're not asked, are they? So, <laughs> they just well, sit there, standing there looking. I'm sick yeah. of this shit every fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not impressed by a poltergeist. Yeah. yeah so that's what, 
and she said, who, who got it left the iron on or something like that. Who got my purse? But anyway, so um, we'll just uh, give some more info. Uh, so Gross visited the house on the 5th of September. He advised Mrs. Hobson to remain calm and recommended that she take notes of any incidents. On the 8th of September, Gross and three Daily Mirror reporters witnessed a loud crash in. Convinced that the Hobsons claimed were, were genuine, Gross now decided to take on the case. During sub subsequent visits, visits, he and others observed marbles that threw through the air and landed on the floor without rolling, doors and drawers that opened of their own accord, door chimes that swung, objects, teaspoon, cardboard box, fish tank lib that jumped. The movements were witnessed by Gross, the Hodgsons, Peggy Nottingham's father and four reporters and photographers from the Daily Mirror. At this relatively early stage, as many as 10 people not related to the family had witnessed the phenomena at first hand. Author and investigator Guy Playfair responded to an appeal to the Psychic Research Society for assistance. And that's when Gross arrived along with Roslyn Morris from, Morris from BBC Radio 4, The World This Weekend. He and Gross worked together for more than a year, making a total of 180 visits and 25 all-night vigils in the house. So, yeah, they were pretty, uh, pretty into it, weren't they? You know, they really wanted to uh, get to the bottom of this. So, uh, the incidents at Enfield were amongst the most closely recorded in any poltergeist activity case. Gross, Playfair, Mrs. Hodgson, and the other witnesses kept records of varying levels of detail, tape recordings, mainly by Playfair and Gross, eventually totaled to over 180 hours. So there must have been some evidence in there of some kind. Um, and uh, and uh, some of the um, incidents that they um, noted were a teapot shaking vigorously on a cabinet with the absence of any external vibration, metal spoons bent, and the lid of a metal teapot was deformed. This wasn't this. Uh, this happened not long after Eurigella was all the rage, you know, in the early seventies, the early seventies, bending spoons and the Spoon like. So, bender, yeah, yeah, interesting. They've chucked that in. The shade of a bedside lamp tilted and then straightened. The toilet door opened and closed when nobody was nearby. So. Uh, it was up Just to, like uh, one of those Japanese toilets. Yeah, one that closes by itself. Ah. Yes, but anyway, this time it was the ghost. He was hanging around in the toilet. So, the ghost of someone with a bad diet, perhaps. The ghost of Dennis Nielsen? It could be. If it he affected you, didn't that. he, Hop it? Dennis Nielsen. Yeah. I, I, I'm not happy about that Dennis Nielsen episode, no. <laughs> uh, my drain was blocked this week. So, uh, oh no! Yeah, it was. Yeah, but uh, when any KFC leave. when any KFC bones down there was there? Yeah, no, it was leaves down there. It wasn't. Uh, that's what was blocking it. So we got that out. But anyway, what else did the poltergeist do? A slipper was thrown across the room by an unknown force. A framed certificate was pulled off the wall. A bedroom carpet was pulled up at the edge to form an identical shape each time, an effect which Gross was unable to replicate. A settee was levitated and overturned in front of several witnesses. You know, why haven't they got camera phones? Well, they did have videos in those days. They had videos, cameras, didn't they? So and when, you, when you're witnessing something this good, you're going to film it. So this is, the, this is the problem I've always had with this case. So anyway, let's have a look. So um, uh, what else was there? 11 year old Janet was levitated and deposited in different places and different times. Kitchen Think unit door slid open of their own accord. What did, those those hmm? teeth of hers, they're, 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 a, they're an anom anomaly, aren't they? <laughs> ah. she's, uh, she had, she bet, she's got, bet she's got the boys lining up, hasn't she? <laughs> this, uh, Is she a big foot was... with those teeth? This was this answers my next question, which was going to be: Are there any children present, and especially like there's pubescent? Four. There's four, uh, two girls, two boys. I bet. Yeah, are there pubescent girls present in this house? <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, 
Because I, I, I heard somewhere that it's when these girls are going through puberty, they don't realize they got telekinetic powers. And so this poltergeist activity happens and it's scary because, oh no, how could this happen? It must be some external force. Um, mm, there's something going on. or they, Maybe they like the attention as well, like to be the center of attention at that age. Yeah, but it's attention by proxy, I suppose. It could well be. Um, yes, it's uh, in various, like uh, if you say Jeff the Talking Mongoose was a poltergeist case, which some do. Then again, you have uh, the the girl in the house. What was she? Fourteen, something like that, isn't it? It's about that age. Verity, oh. Verity, uh, yeah. So uh, you remember Jeff the yeah. Talking Mongoose, don't you, Albert? I Jeff remember he was called spelt Geff. Geff, Jeff, Geff, yeah. Geff. Perfect. It's a gr it's a good case. Yeah. But yeah, so. Um, so yeah, it is, a, it is a common factor. And also, the girl in The Exorcist uh, was about the same age as well, the movie, which we'll come on to shortly. Uh, wasn't there but a again, daughter involved in Borley Rectory as well, wasn't there? Um, it's hard to say, isn't it? That was, uh, that was uh, It probably was, because they did have families living in that house. And uh, the Phantom Nun might have been uh, of that age as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, you know, uh, that's what we've got there. Let's look at, um, let's go, let's go further into the case. So by October 1977, the moving and throwing of objects had been now going on for weeks. Plus the entity had ripped a 60 pound cast iron fireplace from the wall. So it's pretty strong, the, uh, the ghost. Teenager in a mood. So, but, yeah. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, the teenager, having yeah. a having a, a a strop, but yeah. So um, that's what uh, that's what we had there. This was that, that's interesting. That how how was a fireplace to be ripped off the wall? It's all right. One thing you can, you know, you can throw a bit of Lego when someone's not looking, can't you? But to rip a fireplace off the wall, you know, you've got to be. Uh, well, that's back, a, it, back then they'd have been it, well in, wouldn't they? They'd have been like concreted it, in or it, something, wouldn't they? Even back then. Exactly, yeah. So, um, though though Morris and Guy were convinced by the goings on, many many members of the Society of Psychical Research were not convinced, and they thought that it was the girls of the family playing tricks to gain attention. So that's what the uh, they let Morris get on with it because he was so much in cloud cuckoo land. The society started to think, well, he's a uh, he's um going a bit far here and he's been being taken in by the girls so that's what uh, that's what it was at that point um november 1977 morris gross noticed that the knocking sounds seemed to be intelligent and decided to try and communicate with it using the one knock for yes and the two knocks for no approach so morris asked the presence um if the he asked if the presence was dead and the reply was 53 knocks. So someone's not taking this seriously, are they? So, <laughs> yeah. so um, as the month passed, Janet, 12, began to play up in her behavior, started be acting very peculiar. And uh, Boris said that she seemed to have been taken over. And there she is there. That's her on the screen. So, uh, yeah. Were those teeth a part of the possession, were they, or...? They were there already, so <laughs> I think that's what that's what drew the uh, drew the poltergeist to her. I think maybe the teeth took it well, as a it signal. The, it was the, it was the Stonehenge formation. Do you think it was that drew the ghost? In? Yeah, could be could be a could be a vampire, couldn't it as well? <laughs> Use that to, to bite the neck of the victims. As someone said in yeah. chat, she could she could eat eat an apple through a tennis racket, couldn't she? Yeah. It's a fucking dog, isn't she? But anyway, <laughs> so. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's that's um, so this she is the main the main uh, focus for the poltergeist activity. Uh, yeah, I don't fancy yours much. So, <laughs> um, so this is Janet, and she was teased at school. Um, you know, really? the other kid. Yeah, of course she was. <laughs> you <weird>. don't say. <laughs> and having a and you know having a ghost uh, made it even worse. So yeah, the other kids they bullied her. They called her ghost girl. 
arsehole wanker, stuff like that. And a brother also, um, he was he was called freak boy, shithead, and cunt. And um, <laughs> you know, and the bullies, the bullies would you know uh, oh. take his take his lunch money off him, throw his so throw much his wisdom, coat, mm, throw his coat like up a tree, yeah, that kind of stuff. So yeah, so much wisdom we can learn from the youth. All, the, all yeah. that bullying, and that was just his mother. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, that would be a good target for bullies, so, eh? so followed followed on the way home and the like, and uh, oh, the, sing, the single the parent, the single parent mother would have made him would have would have drew him out of the, like back back in those days, wouldn't it? Would have drew, drawn him out to be a, a target, wouldn't it? Mm. Your mother's a slag, that kind of thing. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, let's get back to the uh, to the case. So uh, yeah, one of the ways the um, entity communicate, communicated was through Janet. So, um, and um, she became sort of the focus for the uh, for the haunting. Um, and initially, this took the form of drawings. So, sort of not fully conscious, Janet uh, would take a felt pen to paper and produce drawings. Um, the drawings were they were of not a nice nature. The first was of a woman with blood pouring out of her throat, and the rest were based on a similar theme. Um, go to the next slide. Let's have a look at a drawing. Let's see what we've got. We just do that. Bit blood. You sure that's one of hers? You sure that's one of hers? Well, not, one, not one of Charles Bronson's. <laughs> um, <laughs> Willie Murray. Well, you know, look at the size yeah. of that donger. Jesus. Yep. She could tell what was on her mind, but in saying that, this she's better this, drawing um, than I am. Yes. Well, this is Terrain, quite easy. You don't even need to be a psychologist for this one. This is puberty stuff, isn't it? All the blood and the dick. Well, <laughs> well, we. The thing is, I knew of these drawings, and um, and I couldn't. I tried to find them online. And I couldn't. I couldn't find them anywhere. This isn't one of her drawings. This was off. I don't know. Do you know of the Ghost Watch? Uh, the Ghost Watch. Um, oh right, okay. Of the, yeah, of the, the, that which was based based loosely on this case. Um, yeah, it, it was with Sarah Green and uh, her husband, wasn't it? Uh, what's his name? Mike Smith, wasn't it? Those two yeah. did it, and it, and it was and it was really good. Apparently, I don't. I, I know when it, it was but... uh, Nick Nick Cook, wasn't it? Was it one of those guys? You know. Yeah, I, I think eight, Mike. Eight... Uh, was it? Was it? Was it? Um, I think Craig Charles was Johnny on the spot in that, weren't he? <sighs> Um, I haven't seen, haven't seen it to be honest. Um, I've seen clips of it, and it looks pretty good. Apparently, they got complaints on that at the time because it was too, so scary. But, uh, but anyway, this drawing is from there because I thought I'd use this because I couldn't find Janet's original oh, right. drawings, and, th and this was that was off there. It was only on the screen for a few seconds, but just uh, think a BBC researcher wrote drew that. For the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit messed up, isn't it? But what we have got, though, what I did find in the end was the real drawing. So if we go to the next slap, uh, slide, let's see how messed up Janet was in the head. Let's have a look. Oh, look. We know she messed up in the teeth she was. Yep. There Good. we go. Look at that. There we go. I'm not sure what it says there. So someone stabbed themselves in the eye, obviously. Uh, it forward, says it? Will. Oh, it's yeah, for the forward, forward, that does, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit messed up, isn't what it? Is that, what's that next say thing. underneath? I suppose, is it like... I'm not sure. I tried to will W H I or is it W H W W Wilkins? That's interesting, isn't it? I know w what Willie yeah. May. <laughs> Willie May. <laughs> it's it definitely I mean there's a Z I N at the end, Z I N F. Yeah, that that's that spells Willie May. Will Zimpf. Will Zimpf. She had a problem, didn't she? But, she but it looks like that, I, I've been a closer look at the, what it says. It could be W Wilk, Wilkins, is it? Perhaps. But it looks like she Something tried like to that. draw it at the top as well, doesn't it? They yeah, she just drew it. W, W, W. She, she's, she predicted the internet in the top bit. Look, W, W, W. And then, yeah, so she was psychic after all. <laughs> Tell you what, let's look at the next slide. Let's have a look at her. Have a look at this one. Yeah. Oh, nice. At least uh, she's got a smile on her face. Well, 
Someone finds it amusing, but uh, well, you know, yeah, it's not a, uh, you know it's not a self portrait because the teeth are inside the mouth. Yeah, it's got a banana for a mouth. That's a very specific uh, knife, isn't it? Because it was like a wooden handled knife because they're like the rivets, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty messed up. Let's go to the next one and see what other uh, fucked up shit she came out with. Knife, just in case you didn't know, that's what it was. Knife, oh yeah. yeah. Again, it's got, bad, it, again it's got the dots on the knife, isn't it? Yeah. But I would expect better from a 12-year-old, to be honest. Yeah. Um, she wouldn't get the old man she was possessed by. Well, we'll get on to that. Let's go on to the next slide. We'll just yeah. see how messed up this child was and just see what kind of is stuff she came out Is with. that bestiality going on there? I'm not sure. <laughs> There's something funny. <laughs> that guy. The guy, the guy behind happy. the whole... He looks happy to be on that horse, doesn't he? Yeah, he's smiling, isn't he? He's got his, uh... <laughs> so we've got blood. He's just happy to see the horse. Yeah. <laughs> and the blood. Yeah. The horse. Blood. The horse blood. with a. Maybe it's a. Maybe it's a deer. Mm. And if I've it no was, idea. if it was, it would be a no idea. Because look, he's got no eyes. Uh... <laughs> but it I says we think alike. Blood, 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 and then that says something different at the top, doesn't it? Booner? I don't know. Is he? Boner. Is that someone's curry order? Booner? I've never had a boner curry. <laughs> that around horses. Blob. Blob. Yeah, Boy, it's room. some kind of strange, uh, strange stuff there. Next to the neck, it says Byro B. Byro B. That's Byro. in that's in Australia, isn't it? I just see biro and then B. It could be blood, but that's like the wrong way round for a D. So I'm just going to assume biro B and the other words are blood, 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 blood. Yeah. Well, you know, it's what she did. So let's just have a look at the next uh, picture she did. And let's have Danger, a look at what we can blood. Blood. Again, the and dots again, on the knife. That's a very specific yeah. knife that she's drawing there, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like she's done it on a post-it. But, uh, yeah, so that's what that's the sort of thing she Were was coming out with. they an anti-knife campaign at school? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. Danger. Could blood. be, could I, No, knives, knives were fine in those days. You, yeah. you, could, uh, you could carry one on your belt like a gun. Let's have a look at the next slide and see what she did across the North Circular on a bridge. <laughs> hey, it was her. She, yeah, she was responsible for that. In fact, the bridge um, is near where is near Enfield, so it's, oh, it's spooky. Likely. There's no such yeah. thing as coincidence. But they've 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 wiped that off. I think uh, I, I think there. only people of a certain age get that one. Hobbit, do you get that one? No, I, I don't ah, know who M. Khan is, sorry. M it's a very you, famous bit of a yeah, big but, graffiti hobbit. But you know, you don't know who M. Khan is, but you know that he's bent. So, yeah. And something like 300,000 cars drove under that bridge a day. And they all read that. So M. Khan has no chance in life, does he? But anyway, let's go to the next picture. And we'll we'll um, we'll cover the, more of the story. Let's go to the next one. Oh, is that Morris touching her leg? <laughs> I told you he was a bit of a ghost to Jimmy Savile. It's the ghost of yeah. Jimmy Savile, isn't it? It was all now right then, in those now days. Then. Then. Yeah. Now then, now then, yeah, what are you it, doing up there? It was a different time. It was all right in those days. So, so, so. so anyway, let's get on with this. So on the night of the twenty sixth of November, a doctor had to be called to the house because of Janet's erratic behaviour. Janet was injected with 10 milligrams of Valium. Seems all right. Is that and, a lot? Uh, this put, um, well, it'll do, yeah. So this put <laughs> Janet to sleep. But half an hour later, a loud crash was heard coming from the girl's bedroom. Upon investigating the commotion, Janet was found on top of a bedroom unit. She was still asleep. Apparently, she had been thrown 14 feet across the room. And there she is on the cabinet. And, uh, so, and that's Morris having a little feel. Checking her pulse, but, wasn't he? Oh, my God, look I've at her just, feet. They're hideous. Uh, they was gonna, <laughs> we could do, we could do um, the next the next um, programme we do could be Bigfoot, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Jesus and Christ, look at that. 
She's a 12 year old girl with a man's foot. Look at fucking at the hands are fucking big and all, aren't they? She, Anne's, like, I would... Anne's like a navvy, isn't she? Anne's like a goalkeeper <laughs> and an Adam's apple. <laughs> and she and she knows how to fix a car. Maybe, maybe Janet was really John. Mm. Yes. Could well be. Well, it's fashionable these days, isn't it? Yeah. So. But, yeah, so that's where she is there. So, yeah, so there is actually a radio underneath her. She's actually on top of a radio. But, you know, if you look at her hand, she's supporting herself there, isn't she? And that yeah. second leg, even though Morris is feeding her up on the on the, on the the uh, left-hand side, if you look at the right-hand leg, which you'll probably have a touch, you'll probably touch that lately, later on. Yeah. And that's kneeling on top. It's obviously supporting herself. So I don't know what he's up to, she's up to, but I know what he's up to. Although but, yeah, she's so. supporting herself on the wall, isn't she? Yeah, but if could you look at the second... She, she could be one. holding herself steady with that foot you can see, couldn't she? That's not yeah. floating in midair, is and, it? And she's got a big hand there, so supporting yeah. herself with the... Let's give her a big hand. I oh, know she's already got yeah. two. She's got two big hands yeah. and, a cock, and a cock and knackers as well. So. <laughs> Keeping it for real, said she's been chewing those feet with her teeth. <laughs> yeah. It's like a flipper. So, so yeah. So, uh, but yeah, looking at that, we can do. Um, we can do um, Bigfoot. How do you fancy that yeah, for a I future think we've show? Solved yeah, it. That'd be we've good. solved it. It's Janet oh. from the Enfield Haunting. Yeah. I was thinking of doing uh, Bigfoot or um, or the JFK conspiracy, but uh, that's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? So uh, I'll say that again. So yeah, we could do the JFK conspiracy. <laughs> I just but, got uh, that one. That's Hobbit, a that's a no-brainer. Hobbit, Hobbit, wake up and laugh. Hobbit. That was a joke. I'm sorry. I I, <laughs> I I was reading the chat instead. I it was something about miscommunication. He which said I about think... JFK. It was a no-brainer. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I I never liked him though. I never liked him. So uh, since he's died, I miss him like a hole in the head. So, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Any more? Any more? But yeah. So that's that. So there we go. Let's go on to the next. All I've got but... is a really bad joke about for whom the bell knolls. It's a really bad like, yeah. grassy knoll joke. That's not a good one. Oh, the grassy knoll, yeah. Yeah, free the bell knolls. Ah. Uh, free the bell tolls. Tolls, knolls, yeah. Yeah, again, I suppose, it, I suppose yeah. it kind of works. Yeah. But anyway, let's, let's go forward. Let's look at the next slide. Let's look and see what's going on in the oh, house. Yeah, any chance, any chance. Look at that. You see a bit of yeah. nicker there, look. You can as well. You can size them hands, look. That, her hand can I go know. around her own thigh. Jesus, uh -huh. no chance. I'm more concerned about what his hands are doing. So there's, <laughs> uh, he's having a right, right good field, isn't he? There. Yeah. Yeah. Since his wife he's died, he's been, he's been acting like this. Big grin on his face, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, a, and an erection, probably as well. Yeah. And the and the dolls just sat there like, if only you knew how bad things were, Hobbit. <laughs> oh, that poor old doll. Seen some sights. Maybe it's a devil doll, and uh, yeah, Annabelle com comes to life, Chucky. Yeah, so that's one of the. So there she go. There, she's having. She's going ape shit there. So he's uh, he's refraining her. I don't know what. Uh, not sure what what uh, what the outcome of that was. Let's go to the next case and see see the next of his offences. So let's go to the next uh, the next slide there. Let's look at the slide forty one and see what he's doing. There's a there's a good good mix of colour and black and white photos, isn't there? Yeah, it was the seventies, so colour was all the rage. So, uh, and <laughs> as part of the investigation, cameras were set up in the girls' bedroom, mm. uh, so they could be <laughs> operated remotely. Yeah, and, and they take bursts of four uh, bursts of photos every four minutes. So, uh, so if there was any activity going on. The folk, the uh, the cam, the film, the film would have uh, caught it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what she's doing there. She's obviously uh, being possessed. Nice wallpaper job taking, there, isn't it? Yeah, especially but if you, it's not even some of it's come off the wall as well. Mm. It's not uh, typical of those people. But <laughs> yeah, so that's so there he is making the you know taking full advantage of it. You know, I don't like the guy to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> let's go to the next. Um, 
let's have a look and see well, it's, it's what you money to see. <laughs> right so there we go this is one of the images that the camera the camera uh took with the pillow levitating across the bedroom just or below the, pi- or the pillow in mid-flight as she throws it off the bed yeah with yeah, that yeah. hand that's sticking out of the bed <laughs> there's three of them in the same room three beds in the same room like yeah a, blimey like 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 youth hosteling isn't it yeah. so, <laughs> I'd say it wouldn't be nice in there after chilly night would it yeah exactly backpackers that's, hold on a minute that is that image is reversed it could be you don't know if you, you look at the do you see the book on the mantelpiece mm. uh is it diana it's dawes it. annual or something it's called diana <laughs> and it's that's back to front so that's uh yeah some of these photos mm. to avoid copyright is that is that british <laughs> army regulation that carpet is it <laughs> it's like <laughs> dpm doesn't it <laughs> it's uh it's not it's 1970s regulation that, yeah yes so the, the girl in the bed on the um, on the right, she doesn't seem to be asked by it. Just have another go. It's a pillow going by her. Go back to sleep. She's probably going, so, fuck's sake, fuck's sake, Janet. Knock it off. I'm trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Keep the fucking noise down. <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> so let's look at the next the next photo, actually. Though I'm... Ones like this, I have my... You know, I don't like that. The next photo is probably the best that we can see is a, it's a it's a sequence of three photos let's move on to that one let's have a look it's the it's the curtain this is a, the this is three photos of the curtain twisting itself and she's obviously that's janet in bed i'm surprised morris isn't hanging around but <laughs> um yeah but look the, the curtain is moving and twisting why is that obviously... off the bottom of that curtain because you can see the yeah. curtain and there's like like weird stuff coming up off the bottom, aren't they? Could be ectoplasm. But, um, yeah, there's obviously some, it's a shame that wasn't filmed because that would have been good if, and, and, and uh, more convincing. But it's a, obviously it's a, a quick succession of photos taken like that. And uh, she doesn't seem to be interfering with the, the curtain and it seems to be doing his own thing. So, so that's, that's interesting, that one. Let's move on to the next photo and see... Yeah, these are the money shots. Let's, uh, let's have a look. It also looks like there's something appearing on the right-hand side of the bed, doesn't it? Because that bottom one, it yeah. looks like a cat or a raccoon mm. or something, doesn't it? Hmm, yes. And the, the bed sheets are becoming darker as the photos go on. Yeah. So. As if she's pissed the bed. So, which is <laughs> knowing the sort of knowing the sort of person she was, it wouldn't surprise me. But, uh, but yeah, let's have a, let's have a look at this. Well, here we go. Then here we go. Oh These are the Jesus ones, Christ! Aren't. Look at them big man hands. Look. Yeah, that's it's how like she's Peter flying. Sh- it's like Peter Shilton in gold, isn't it? Yeah, that's how she's flying. She's flapping her hands, and they're so big that it's uh, making her take off. <laughs> but yeah, this is the this is the levitation scene again. Why why was there no why was there no um why wasn't this videoed? That was obviously, you know, let's move on to the next Also slide there's two people one. in bed on that one, isn't there? And Morris Morris has probably stood at the end of the room <laughs> pleasuring himself whilst watching. So let's move on to the next slide. This is where she's airborne. Let's have a look at this. Let's go look and see. Hey, so yeah, he's heading straight for um, Starsky and Hutch there, and yeah. uh, clearly off the ground. But uh, but obviously, she could be jumping. Let's go on to the next one and just see the next uh, the next picture in the sequence. There, yeah, see, she's so she's jumped in the air and landed by the look of it, but. Uh, that's not what... Uh, what if they got a balloon in what... the room? There's a balloon on the left-hand corner. Maybe it's a maybe it's a clone watching, just coming in, and he's got his nose into shot. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, you can see she's jumping, because you can see like the, the muscles in her leg there, can't you? Yeah, but that's not what she says, is it? So yeah. She said she, she was floating. So, But she said of the levitation... <coughs> um, you know, she said, 
the levitation was scary because I didn't know where I was going to land. I remember the curtain being wound around my neck. I was screaming. I thought I was going to die. Is what she said uh, about the levitation experience. Oh, it's going to change colour as well. Let's have a look. Let's go on to the next slide. We're going to change to pink, haven't they? Because they wear that um, flowery. We have as well. Hang on, hang on a minute. That's a good point. Let's have a quick look at that. Let's go back. See that? So queer. Well, they might have changed the curtains, so mightn't they? Yeah, the the, the curtains are a bit are uh, different. But... Well, he was there. Well, they were there. They did follow it for a fairly long time, didn't they? Yeah. So anyway, let's go on to the next one. Let's look at Janet in action. Let's see how she goes. There we go again. She can't. She can't keep on the floor. And there, her brother. Is it a brother or the maybe the sister? Other, I think yeah. that's the sister. I don't, could, could be, could be either. Yeah. They're very androgynous that family, aren't they? Yeah. They spend a lot of time in bed as well. Not surprised to uh, get out and get a job. Yeah, <laughs> let's have a look at the other. One. Let's have let's see the next one. Just uh, this is this is yeah. Look at this one. This is uh, oh, it's back to the old curtains. Is, it's back to the old curtains now, not the pink curtains. She's got she's got a different different night gown on in that one. Yeah. But if you look, so what spoils it completely is if you look at the bed that Janet has just come off. There's an indentation in the yeah. in the in the yeah, as if downward pressure has caused that. No doubt, propelling herself by her own legs. Uh, let's uh, have a look at the next one. By those massive let's, feet. Yeah, they're big ones. Oh, look, they all fell out of bed now. Oh no, I fell out. Of, oh, the ghost pushed me out of bed. It looks like he's kicking her head in. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, uh, do, uh, do, uh, have a lev levitate again. I'll teach you a get good back lesson. Get in a fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll learn you kids to levitate. Yeah. yeah. We didn't have levitation when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Had to walk everywhere and go down pit. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next picture. There's plenty of pictures. I mean, obviously, we're not going to go through loads of them, but we'll just have a look at the next picture. I'm not oh sure. Oh, my God, those weird, creepy hands of hers. What the <laughs> fuck is going on there? Oh, God. She, oh. They are, they're about the same length as her body. <laughs> what do you think those weird, yeah. creepy, those weird, noodly arms of it? I mean, that kind of explains why the drawings are the way they are. <laughs> I'd like to think. Did, did did she make it into adulthood? Did she sort of fill out her, her gangly proportions? Yeah, or, I, I do. I do. Just... I do have a video of the two sisters talking about the uh, Enfield yeah. haunting. Are they lezzing it up as well? When they're all grown yeah. up, one of them looks like a transvestite. Yeah. But um, her 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 left ha her left hand. They're just doing the the. The sign for gay, isn't it? Yeah. It's doing, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, shut that door. Ooh. So anyway, shut that door. Everybody. But I don't know. I'm not sure if this is showing any activity though. This this uh, is the. I'm not sure if that's showing anything. Were they just in bed? Uh, there's a pillow on the floor. Maybe that was what it was. Let's go to the next one and see what happened to Janet. I just seem to spend all, all day on bed, all day in bed, and all, all of the covers oh, no. end up on the floor all the time. I know they're lazy fuckers, aren't they? It's yeah. just. Uh, Let's look at there she goes again. So that's um, that's Janet there um, after suffering an attack of the poltergeist. So we're on the floor. So yeah, I think Morris Morris would probably like that. That's that's in his private collection. A bit of knicker there. Bit of knicker there. Yeah, yeah. He's got the colour one of that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's look at the next picture and see what damage the poltergeist did. Let's look at this one. Let's go next. Here we oh, go. Oh, no, put a table upside down. Oh, the, 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 table oh, the humanity. What's what's going well, on with that uh, that dress, sock, slipper combination there? Oh, gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice, nice, nice tartan dress with a nice Aaron Cardi. Oh, yeah. Was there and something then... about the 70s where... I, I don't understand. People... What's the word I'm looking for here? Was fashion illegal? <laughs> <laughs> you had to look as bad as possible. Something did go wrong, didn't it? Because the can, 60s... you can tell you can tell that's Janet because of the giant hands, can't you? Yeah, and the and the 
and the size 15 slippers. <laughs> um, His hands are haunting me. I'll tell you why I'm surprised. It looks like it's Mrs. Hodge and they're in the pink cardi. And she hasn't got her slippers on, so she's actually put bothered to put some shoes oh, on for a chain. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's what the that's what the porter guys did. Apparently, put do, do that. To the uh, did that oh, to the uh, only a porter guys could have done that. There's no way a normal human. I, I certainly that. couldn't do it. Let's look at the next picture and see what else the porter guys got up to. Oh no! It tipped a chair over. Is oh it? god! The humanity. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. Neither of those kids could uh, possibly have kicked it over from bed, could they? <laughs> I mean, three, uh, three, three children in one bedroom. It's no wonder there's, there's some sort of spooky activity going on with uh, chairs being tipped. I'm surprised the poltergeist hasn't ripped up their posters or defaced them. Yeah. I uh, get rid of uh, Starsky and Hutch, ripped them down, ripped them to yeah. shreds. But um, if, let's say the poltergeist did do that, let's say it wasn't the kids, it was the poltergeist that put that chair on his back, I'm not impressed, you know. <laughs> You've got to do better than that. You've got to do better than that, isn't it? Something better than that. Apparently as, well, apparently as well, the poltergeist made the kids all moody and they used to throw their clothes on the floor. The, no, the yeah. poltergeist did that. The poltergeist used to throw the clothes on the floor. Uh, tell you what, let's look at the next picture. It's all going on in this one. It's not me, Mum. It's the poltergeist. <laughs> Well, that's interesting, actually, because, um, yeah, there we go. There's something going on there. I'm not sure, not sure what, but uh, is that a pillow floating it's around? It's only actually a pillow going through. Or oh, the duvet yeah. as well. Oh, the duvet is on the... On the Possibly. The but it's interesting that you say that, you know, it wasn't me, Mum, it's the poser guys. Yeah. That's one of the things with possession cases with kids. They can say all sorts, profanities, you know, vulgarities, sexual references all sorts and all you've got to say is oh well it wasn't me mum i'm possessed so yeah. it's the ghost doing that so you can get away with a lot if you're possessed so just bear that in mind well, so she's just doing the that that clip you've got has that got her uh, doing the voice has it yeah is it we're going to come on to the uh, voice clip in a bit yeah. uh, we'll listen you know there was a lot of recordings of uh janet doing the voice um but um yeah we'll come on to that shortly what we'll do next, though, is look at some more poltergeist damage. Let's have a look and see. Let's see what. Oh, the... look at that! Oh, that's just yes. Another cheer on this ass. Oh no. Mm. So interesting, but um, but you know anyone could have done that. Let's go look at the next picture. They used to have to have better. dinner in shifts because there's like eight of them in that house. There's one, one table, one table that seats two. Did... They were they were a gyro family, so yeah, probably probably yes. uh, you know spending spending the money on the money that they, they had. I bet they had but... crinkle cut chips, didn't they? And yeah, yeah, and fucking and uh, <laughs> and smack smack as well, probably. Smack. Knowing that, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's look at the next photo. Let's see what's what's. Oh, before, before we move on, uh, Uno says uh, Four Mica is collectible now, so all that stuff inc incredibly collectible, all their furniture. Oh, no, right, what, kind, but... what kind of monster would have the, the strength to <laughs> tip a sofa over? <laughs> yeah, it's not even a sofa, is it? It looks like a two seater. It's, like, a, but, it's uh... like an overgrown chair, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They probably found it outside someone's house and took it home because that's. Yeah. Uh... They were like, I'm more interested yeah, so the they, is down the bottom there. <laughs> that, is that drug, I, I drug reckon, stash or something? I, or, or Morris has climbed into the uh, into the into the sofa <laughs> to investigate, but then he couldn't control his excitement when he got in there. So that's what <laughs> so protruding there. <laughs> so think, thinking of Janet, wasn't he? Good job, Morris is dead. Otherwise, you'd be up for slander, Neil. Mm -hmm. mm. Anyway, let's look at the next picture. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, God. Hey, 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 this she is. Oh, the beauty! That's your, that's your <laughs> girlfriend. That is the beauty. <laughs> you, you see that? You see that girl there? That's your girlfriend. That is. <laughs> you love Mary her. A bit of a Mary Whitehouse experience gag. Do you remember that, Ian? I do. Yes. Even He's though I thought today. it was, I, I didn't like, I didn't like Newman and Badia, but I thought they were good writers, and they, they were. They came up with some good stuff. But it's, 
you know that, that, you know that Janet, that's your girlfriend, that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You love her. <laughs> you know that for a herd. <laughs> That's your that's your mum, that is. <laughs> anyway, that's what she's. Oh, there we go. That's you know. I don't know what she's doing there. Oh. She's got a big hand, a big oh, hand. Pa- apparently, apparently, the chat chat seems to think they were probably crispy pancakes eaters as well. Oh yeah, fish fingers, uh, turkey twizzlers. Yeah. Um, fr- free, free free school meals. Um, is that is that Morris? Is that Morris trying to get trying to get in the bathroom while she's having, while she's on the toilet? Is yeah, he probably, probably. Yeah, he's trying to cop a look, isn't he? <laughs> Would they have had turkey twizzlers in the seventies? I imagine it'd be more like spam and angel delight. <laughs> spam. I do I like think, spam. I think Bernard Matthews was around in the in oh, the Bert, uh, beautiful. Yeah, and he's behind oh. all. The, he's behind it all. Yeah, but mini kids didn't come until later. Like Kievs were an eighties thing, weren't they? Mm, mini Kievs, along with mullets. Yeah. But anyway, let's. Uh, I tell but you what. Let's look that, at the what next. Is, what actually is that petit picture supposed to be showing? Other than the girl who doesn't want some bloke to go in the bathroom with her. That's. I'm not sure. That was part of the collection. I'm not sure what's going on. I think she's just generally possessed. This. She's probably speaking. Um, there's someone talking through her. So. Probably that That's woman standing next there. to her. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, Morris liked it. That's all that matters, you know. Yeah. Dirty bastard. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so here we go here. Some cups, some plants. Uh, the poltergeist did that, apparently. So, uh, apart from generally causing havoc, he was, like, doing symmetrical things like this. So, putting uh, nice. put them in a neat line. Mm. He weren't, he weren't um, that symmetrical, was he? Because those those uh, those handles are all at sixes and sevens, aren't they? Yeah, he didn't pay much attention to detail, but he got the yeah. he got the right idea. So that's yeah. So again, you know, I could have put that there myself and taken a photo and said, "Oh, look, portuguese Yeah, definitely. But anyway, let's go on to the next one and see. Oh no, more, uh, an upturned table. <laughs> oh, destruction. Uh, that's that's great, isn't it? it? That that ghost has caused literally fifty pence worth of damage, isn't it? Not even that. Yeah. It's interesting though. The ghost did all this damage, um, but havoc and causing um, problems to various objects. The one thing it didn't touch was the TV. Yeah. And if oh, you look think at the dirty bleeders, why is that stain up the side of the door? <laughs> So it's probably Morris is probably jizzed over there. I mean, he's, <laughs> I mean, he couldn't, couldn't wait, couldn't wait to see to see Janet. He's all got too much for him, and he just let go there and there. So let's have a look at the next picture. No, fu- and see. no fun zone wants to know. He said, "Are there autistic part of guys who, instead of making a mess, put things in order?" Well, did you just then, didn't it? Well, the one son was a remedial, so um, yeah. He's got, he's, got the, he's got the nah, it's fucked, mate, pose, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's fucked. Doing There's the, no way you fix doing, that. Doing the builder's, builder's pose, that is. Yeah, yeah uh, that's a... Uh, uh, it's got to cost you, mate, to fix that. The old teeth dryer. Yeah. Won't be able to get you until Tuesday. Where's, Could only just skip as well. Well, it's on its side, mate. That's what it is. Just, just yeah, basically yeah. bed on its side. Yeah, it cost you about 800, mate, so yeah. can't do any less than that. But yeah, so anyway, the poltergeist, there we go. So uh, do you think he was, if he had, if the poltergeist had put that another rotation around, then he could have covered up Starsky and Hutch. Yeah. Uh, so Obviously, like, like I say, there. Like, Hob- there, like Hobbit noticed, never, touch the pos- like, never touches the posters, does it? That's because they like the posters. The is, that Kevin Keegan, don't... is that Kevin Keegan behind the, behind the uh, builder? Down by the bed, down, down by the headboard. It could, yeah, the bed. it does look like him. Yeah. <laughs> and look on the on the left hand side, you've got Diana book. Is that I think dollar? that was. Is that no? And that's hmm? too early for dollar, isn't it? I'm trying to work dollar. out. I'm trying to work out those two are on the left. At the end of the bed. Yeah, it's obviously a duo. Yeah. 
Hard to say, isn't it? But no, that book on the on the left hand side, you've got Diana there. Diana for not, girls. I think that I think that was yeah, I think it was a girls' magazine. Uh, but yeah. So there, yeah, so someone pushed the bed up against it the wall. It never once so moved to... that book. That book is ex- is in exactly the same position every time, unless the unless the part guys puts the book in that position every time. Uh, as a read, and then uh, puts it back where it came from, and no one yeah. knows that they've been here. <laughs> so, all right, let's look at the next impressive bit of poltergeist activity. Let's go forward a slide. Oh no, the the the. Dirty looking cover things slipped off. Oh no! Oh, the humanity. Oh god! Is yeah, no. Could she not buy those it's kids a, some fucking bedding? Look at the state of that. That house is actually a shithole, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, oh, I would. I would be ashamed. I would be ashamed to live there. Let alone like, have, have your pictures out there for generations to come. But anyway, let's look at the. That's what happened there. Yeah. Let's go look at the next. Uh, the next picture let's have a look and see oh no it's tipped is there this, one, go, of those, yeah. is this yeah. one of those one of those magical drawers that's too heavy to lift by mortal man yeah that's uh all the drawers are out there so they must have uh put it at the angle let them all they fall out don't own not. anything to put in the drawers look the fucking drawers are empty <laughs> No, they, 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 no, they were estate people. They wouldn't have. They wouldn't have to waste <laughs> their money. What the money drawers, they do have, they waste. Were the drawers just for show, were they? Mm. Can't be bothered to get a job. So, you know. Anyway, let's look at the next picture and see. Let's see. Look at it. Look at Morris. Oh, Morris leaning in there. On yeah, Jerry, like. yeah. Yeah. Morris is doing the talking. You can tell. The other guy's just sort of uh, going along with it and hope he gets something. She doesn't seem the. I think Morris is doing better here. The other guy. If you look at the girl, the other guy's chatting up. She's really not interested. Whereas, yeah, yeah, you can see that body language. I think, the fact the hands. Yeah, and, face. Whereas, and if you look at Morris's bird, you know she's she's uh, a very forthcoming. Kimbo. Yeah, yeah. The big hand is indicating an area. Um, <laughs> Morris is he's, Morris is looking right there. In, he's got the arm round his got You know he's doing well, isn't he? He's uh, got all the lines. You know, he was no looker, but he was quite a funny guy, and I think that's how that's how he was gonna that's how he got the girls. So you know, just using his <laughs> sense of humor. I mean, there. not that I need to read between the lines, but I'm starting to infer there's a slightly different story here that's not really <laughs> poltergeist activity. I mean, I've got some conclusions, but I'm waiting till the end of the show to say them. Yeah. Mm. Well, it was the 1970s, wasn't it? It was more yeah, acceptable. That kind of thing was acceptable, time. apparently. You know, yeah. It was acceptable at the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was different times. So, and there we go. Let's look at the next shot. This is what the next picture is what. Um, is that Morris? It, no, as, you know, if I see a ghost, if I see a ghost, that's what I want to see. That's yeah, the I don't, don't want to see yeah. an upturned for my table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuck the dicking about, you know, give us that. That's what we want, yeah. isn't it? That's, God, it's clan. That's what Morris used um, to do. He used to stand in the... Don't look at well, me, girls, I'm not here. That's what Morris yeah. used to do. And he'd have the holes further down, he'd be about halfway down. So. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I'm a ghost. So can... Ooh. <laughs> that sheet's way too clean to have been found in that house. <laughs> but, um, it's interesting you mentioned the Ku Klux Klan, because that's what... And they, originally, when they started... Um, in the uh, what is it the mid early mid 18, 1800s uh they were being ghosts that's what that's why they wore those uh, those robes to rep to try and be ghosts and uh, scare people that's what they were about so i did i actually in, read uh, that in the uh, 14 mm. 14 times is that where you read it the uh, ian um i read it somewhere obviously but yeah. um yeah that's what you know they were they were more of a it wasn't it wasn't long after slavery had been abolished and the slaves were more, they were more likely to believe in uh, supernatural uh, phenomena and religion and that. So, and that's what uh, the KKK started doing was scaring those people, playing pranks on them with their, with their ghost outfits. So that's what uh, we got there. But yes, uh, there was more to it than that, though, as we <laughs> found out as time went on. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, all right. And so that's that bit covered. Let's, um, Let's um, let go to the next section and let's have a look, let's have a look and see what we have. 
So yeah, um, on the 10th of, of December 1977, the, uh, the uh, entity started to manifest itself. I've got an address through that's Janet. Up as my next slide. Yeah. That's right, yeah, because we're oh, going right, to come on right. to this. This, is, okay. this, is, this is relevant, yeah. All my links are real. So, um, yeah, so anyway, um, Janet started to speak in a possessed voice, uh, a growling voice. Well, all um, those Ws and stuff could have been William or Wilkins, couldn't they? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're going to come on to because, so, uh, yeah, initially she started, Jen, the noise she was uh, making was that, that of a dog, a barking dog. But eventually, the voice, um, the growling voice, started to uh, emerge into an Eng started to speak English. Um, and when um, when speaking in the voice, Janet described it as someone putting their hand on the back of her neck. The investigators recorded the interviews with Morris, the voice. Uh, yep, yeah, Morris was the investigator. He's always there when Janet's around. So, uh, and um, said, and J the one time Janet said that it was the ghost of a man called Bill who went blind, had a hemorrhage, and died in the house while sat in the chair downstairs. Some years later, a man called Terry Wilkins came forward and said that his father, called Bill Wilkins, had died in the house many years earlier. So, and this is the exact same circumstances that Janet has described. So that's that's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, unless Janet knew the history of who had lived in the house over the years, she wouldn't have come up with such a thing. And for a twelve-year-old girl to go to the public records office and to look that up, then uh, you know that's. Um, she was probably that's, illiterate that, as well, weren't she? We've seen we've seen the state of her. Oh yeah, haven't we? Yeah, she couldn't draw. She couldn't write. You know, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't the brightest of people, and um, yeah, so that's that's interesting. And this here, that's what we see on we see on the screen now is it, that is from the public records office, and that tells you who's who lived at two eight four Green Street. And there you go, nineteen sixty one, sixty two. Um, a guy called William and Ethel Wilkins lived there, and um, so obviously William was Bill, wasn't it? So. Yeah, and the guy said, the guy Terry Wilkins said that uh, his father, Bill, died in the house in the exact same circumstances. So that's interesting, isn't it, to, to be so so precise? How could she access this information? Did they ask um, him if his dad liked tipping tables over? Uh, they could have done. But, uh, <laughs> so, or maybe maybe he didn't like nonces, and that would have been the end of uh, Bill. You would be you know, <laughs> like a shot, wouldn't you? They'd give him a good decking. So, if we go um, go to the next slide, we'll look at a bit more about Bill Wilkins. Go to the next one. Yeah. So that's uh, this really is one of the one of the points in favour. That's his actual death certificate. So he did exist. And if we go to the next, the next, uh, the next um, picture, please. The next we can one look after. Yeah. At... Oh, that's him, all right. And that's his grave. So he did exist. There he is. Bill Wilkins. William Charles Wilkins. Let's go to the next, uh, the next um, picture, please, and we can just see. And there he is. This is uh, this is a clip from uh, the Conjuring Two, which was based on, which was about the Enfield case, and uh, obviously they 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 exaggerate it. This is one of those scenes where you know the person is in the bathroom, they shut the cabinet mirror, which is a. And then a face appears behind him. It's been used a lot, hasn't it? I think Candyman used yeah. it. It's various, but yeah, that's a, so. This, that there is how the film depicted Bill Wilkins there, that old that old bloke eyeing up the young girl. So Morris has got some competition now. So hasn't was he? Bill Wilkins a stand-in for Morris Groston? <laughs> Bill Bill Wilkins was the actual was the actual was the actual entity. So no, I mean, Bill Wilkins so in think. Conjuring Two was the stand-in for uh, Morris Gross. Really, have you seen it? Uh, I think I once I watched it once. Yes, yes. I mean to watch it, but I never get round to it. Yeah, That's, uh, bit overblown. Um, I think yeah, the whole um, house explodes in the end, or something. You know, it really? explodes with well, like, psychic energy. I think it, it's yeah, it goes a bit it. over the top. Well, well, it didn't because it's still there. So, yeah. I would like I would like to live in the house myself. That would uh, that would impress the girls, wouldn't it? Well, 
I think if you blew that house up, it would probably cause about 50 quids with improvements. Wouldn't yeah. <laughs> I tried to find it on Zoopla and uh, I couldn't find anything. So it still must be a council house. So, uh. so I couldn't find anything. But those houses are, are pricey. Enfield is a shell, but um, it's near well, it's London, London, isn't it? It's going to yeah. be. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. And it looks a shit house as well. But anyway. But anyway, let's carry on with this. So, um, but, but Bill, Bill, him there, he wasn't the only voice to come through Janet. She had other other characters coming through her, going by the name of Joe Watson, Fred, Dirty Dick, <laughs> Andrew Gardner, and Stuart Surton. And so that's they're the people. They're the other people that came through that she was. So she was possessed by quite a few, um, quite a few uh, ghosts. Uh, Dirty Dick. That must. That might have been. Morris, the ghost of Morris, mightn't it? <laughs> and, you had, <laughs> hey. <coughs> and you had Stuart Surton, so which has, it sounds like a punk singer. You know, yeah. From a punk band. <coughs> but there. Okay, what we'll do now then, let's um let's listen to to the to the audio clip we have. Um let's listen to the first clip, which is Janet being possessed and she, she's being interviewed so it goes on a bit so we won't play too much of it but uh, let's just listen to her being possessed it's only, by one of these only five interviews. minutes long anyway well let me hear you say my name come on let me hear you say my name Sorry, Bill, can you say that again, please? Hey, 
What a dog I look. Thanks ever so much. Why can't Janet fool you? I'm invisible. You're invisible? Why are you invisible? So much you hang out as did any friends go with you? Yes, all of them. All the dogs, 68 dogs. So what do you got 68 dogs for? So that they can protect me from you killing me. They can bite you right off. How can we kill you, Bill? You can shoot me off. Now how do we, how can we shoot you if we can't see you, Bill? Fuck me, you God! Sorry, I didn't hear that, Bill. Fuck me, you God! By praying to God? So, what you're saying is we can't get rid of you by praying to God? Yes. Is it finished? Uh, there's got you got. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much done. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Done now. yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, there we go. So there's the procession, and um, she was, um, and Bill was speaking through her there. That was the clip where um, she told of Bill and how he died, which did turn out to be actually real. What we'll do, um, let us listen to the following clip, which is a clip from The Exorcist, the movie. Let's listen to that. That's not as long as that. This is a good one. Nice. Let's play that. In the face of the enemy. <sighs> Let the enemy have no power over him. And the sound of the liquid be powerless to harm him. Your mother sucks cocks and hell, oh, Paris, you prayer. faithless oh, slime. And there we go. So you can see the similarities between the two. Your mother sucks cocks in hell, is what she said. Which is... Uh, is it? It's one of the classic movie lines, isn't it? Yeah. You can, Luke, I am your father. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> your mother sets cops in hell. Uh, you know. I, wasn't it the, um, what's the one with Dennis? No, not Dennis Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, uh, repossessed, was it? wasn't it? Uh, it was saying like that, and then like... Uh, Linda it was, Blair was in film, that too, yeah, wasn't she? Your, your mother sets cops in hell, and then... He's playing the priest. He's just, oh, fuck you. And he takes us the revolver and shoots her in the chest. <laughs> I think that was uh, Loaded Gun. That was it. He did. Yeah. Re he did. They did do an Exorcist one, didn't they? That, yeah, they that, did an Exorcist uh, parry. It was called uh, Repossessed, weren't it, with Leslie Nielsen as a vicar? I uh, know. I think this was Naked Gun 33 and a third. And oh, right, at the okay. beginning of it, he's an Exorcist. Is that the one where he has a concrete dildo? Oh, uh, which one's I that? I do yeah, not yeah, remember. no, he's trying yeah. to climb around the building, isn't he? And he yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then he pulls that, <laughs> that dick off that thing, doesn't he? The statue, yeah. Yeah. It attacks, it attacks a woman with a concrete dildo. Yeah. But anyway, as you can see, the two things, as you know, there's the film and this case, The Exorcist, the film, and this case. There's so many similarities I'm noticing, which is, which is odd because... This was 1977, and um, The Exorcist, I think, came out in 1973. You didn't have video and that. If you wanted to see a film, you had to go to the cinema. And um, so these girls, wouldn't they wouldn't have seen the film. But similarities are, uh, are there, you know, the levitation, the possession. Some years fair, after the ja case... To be fair, Janet's a lot, lot creepier than anything that Linda Blair does in that film. <laughs> I prefer Linda Blair to Janet. Yeah. But when she was older. Oh, that, 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 but, prison, that prison film she did, is that what you're going to start talking about, Ian? Oh, I do tell you she did well. I've not seen her. <laughs> I, I have heard she was doing that. Yeah, because her, her career didn't take off, did it, after The Exorcist? She, she was, yeah, she it, was, kind, uh, it kind of stalled a bit, then. <laughs> yeah, but she ended up doing skin. But uh, yeah. anyway. But anyway, as I said, some years after the case, the girls said 
that they uh, dicked about with a Ouija board. And that's how um, it started. Um, and again, in The Exorcist, that happened. You know, that, that was part of the early part of the film where they were doing a Ouija board and uh, it was responding. And that's where the, the demon Pazuzu came came through. So that anyone, sounds like there's a famous de- demon, isn't there? Zozo that always comes through. Pazuzu. Yeah, that's the one. That, um, that's the one in The Exorcist, Pazuzu. Is, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, anyone anyone done a Ouija board? Anyone tried? Nope, wouldn't even touch one. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Not scared. Not scared. Or no, I just no. wouldn't do one. I have. Oh, I've done it. How did it go? I want my money back. So yeah. Oh, you didn't go. Yeah, it did. It didn't go. But if it did, I would. I, you know. I, you but need, no, I didn't. You need Derek Akora with you for a good one, don't you? Mary loves Dick. Mary loves Dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead now, isn't he? Yes. I think. Yeah. yeah. He was uncovered as a fraud anyway. So. Oh, that, yeah. that, anyway, that they... Mary loves Dick stuff was real good stuff. Well, yeah. Uh, maybe Janet loves Dick as well. <laughs> Morris loves Janet. Morris Back to the, um, the yeah. So there we go. There's the there's a scene from The Exorcist. If you uh, that's where famous puke up scene. Them. Yeah, and uh, I do like that film. I must admit, it's a good film, isn't it? Better than better than some of the stuff you have these days. Yeah, Linda, but, Blair, yeah, Linda Blair, to... Blair got injured doing that, didn't she? There's one of the bits where she got thrown around. Um, something went wrong, and it threw her back out, mm-hmm. didn't it? Yeah, and uh, it's one of those films which. Is haunted. Apparently, you know things. Things were going wrong. I think the Omen was the same. The same. Where there's a lot yeah. of cases of maybe members of the cast dying and having accidents and That's stuff Army's like that. That's Army's cursed so. as well, isn't it? Because they're all dead now, aren't they? And three three men and a baby as well. Yes. You see a ghost if you look closely in the film. Apparently, that's not a ghost. That's someone on set reflected in them. That's a, that's a no. It's a it's a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson. To uh, promote the film, and, and they they put they stored it behind the curtain, and it got look and it came into the film. <laughs> but yeah, let's look at the next slide. Let's just have another look at the Exorcist, a clip from the Exorcist. If we have a look, so you can see the levitation, of course. The night so looks very uh, familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, and look, Father Caris is having a right good look up there, isn't he? He's a, he's a bit of a Morris Gross, isn't he? Yeah, got hold of the big foot as well, isn't it? So, but yeah, there we go. So that's uh, that's the Exorcist. Which I find that you know that's one of the things which kind of puts me off this case is the fact that it's so similar to that film. How it how it but then, is. But then, you like you say, anything. there's the likelihood of those girls having seen it. But I suppose they could have heard stuff about it, couldn't they? It's it's unlikely in those days, you know, because you it was an 18 film, so kids couldn't go and see it, would and you been, couldn't would see have been it an any X other. back then, wouldn't it? Was it mm. an X? X was eighty. X was eighteen, isn't it? I think that's right. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's odd. But anyway, let's go back to the case. So, uh, on the afternoon of the fifteenth of December, nineteen seventy-seven, Hazel Short, a lo- lollipop lady at the local primary school, was with a man called John Rainbow. Both were walking past the poltergeist house when they saw Janet floating around her bedroom, banging up against the window. She also witnessed books and other objects flying around the room, and the curtains in the room were, were blowing around inside. So, as if they, as if the, uh, as if the window was closed. So, uh, yeah, the curtains were moving, but the window was was closed. Apart from the fact she was seeing people levitating and uh, and uh, books and stuff flying about. Plus, she was with a witness, and they both witnessed this. So that's um, that's interesting, isn't it? How. How, uh, how could Janet pull off such a stunt to passers by? How could she levitate with no one being, you know, with with the witnesses looking at it like in that way? And uh, how can you levitate? Odd. Anyway, so that's basically the main main bits of the case. Let's uh, let's look at the next slide. Let's have a look at how Janet turned out. What a beauty. Better than I, well, yeah, you thought so. Uh, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> dude, dude, that's a dude. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I think on when she was younger, that's a 100% improvement. Mm, a chick with a dick. But anyway, yeah. so the disturbances continued in much the same way until Ju- July 1978. Janet was admitted to Maudsley Hospital for extensive psychiatric testing. Two months later, she was given a clean bill of health with no sign of Tourette's or epilepsy or any other illness which could partly explain the events which had happened. Upon her return home, the disturbances seemed to calm down almost as quickly as they began. The strange happenings of the Hodgson home had finally ceased. And today, the Enfield case remains Britain's most famous haunting. And though as extensive criticism, it has never been fully debunked. And that's Janet there. And she does appear on um, TV from time to time. And she, yeah, she's not, she's not right in the head. You can tell that when she's walking, uh, <laughs> talking. I mean, she, when she's talking, I mean, she's, yeah, she's very nervous, uh, you know, and she's not like, quite right. Someone who I wouldn't trust anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, after Peggy Hodgson, the mother died, the house was briefly occupied by mother of four, Claire Bennett, who stated, I didn't see anything, but I felt uncomfortable. There was definitely some kind of presence in the house. I always felt like someone was looking at me. Her sons would wake in the night hearing people talking downstairs. Bennett then found out about the house's history, and suddenly it it all made sense. She said the family moved out after just two months. So, yeah, so another family moved in afterwards, another... uh, family after a council house and uh, they said the same thing and, and moved so though even though they didn't actually see anything they said it uh, there was something funny about the house the house is currently occupied by another family who don't wish to be identified and the mother says i've got children they don't know about it and i don't want to scare them so that's uh that's uh that's how it is let's have a look at the yeah, house today let's what's go the to the next being anonymous? slide what's the point of being anonymous we know where they live <laughs> <laughs> well the kids will find out at some point anyway but yeah. uh let's have a look at the, the the next slide the house today as it oh, stands that looks a lot less scruffy, doesn't it? yep so that's it the one on the 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 semi the semi on the right and the and that's vic semi on the left you can see vic semi there yeah. Let's have a look at the next slide. Have another quick look at the house from a different angle. Let's go forward. That says Jesus house in the window. Yeah, that's interesting. That's why I was, yeah, that's so, so, so one entity moves out and another moves in. So Jesus lives there now. So yeah, interesting that. So was it a hoax though? Was it a hoax? I don't know. Don't believe in ghosts. She's quite obviously advertising it's Jesus house. Maybe but, there's yeah, some, some just... stuff going on, but people are denying it. Well, the, the, the sisters did, um, at the centre of the case, they admiss- admitted to hoaxing some of the poltergeist activity. So they were responsible for some of the activity themselves by throwing Lego and the like. Well, I don't, I don't, they said I don't know how all... a young girl on her own would have been able to topple that, that table downstairs or no, all those exactly. chairs. Or throw that pillow in the air. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so they um you know so they admitted doing something but not all they still had admit that some of it was real uh, chris french said the girls admitted they faked stuff of course people who believe them say well they might have faked some of it but some of it must be real believers tend to think we're too clever to be hoaxed by schoolgirls, but because you don't figure out how something is done doesn't mean it was impossible to do. Well, me, so me, and, hundred... me and Hobbit, me and Hobbit have spoken about this before. Like the incredibly high bar there is for proof stuff actually exists, whereas there's like an incredibly low bar that that stuff's a hoax. It's like we were talking about it when we did the crop circles episode. Episode those those two guys said they had a, that it was them two and a plank of wood, and and everyone mm. and everyone believed them and took it as gospel, didn't they? Yes, the two men with some plywood mm. at three in the morning during the weekdays, or up and down the country, <laughs> just make these crop circles, just for a laugh. Yeah, they, they, weren't they some kind of artists as well? Though, and this was this was one of their ways of expressing the art. But um, yeah, that's what they said. But, um, another um, another reason for it being a host: the classic coat. 
photo of 11 year old Janet levitating above their bed could easily be Janet jumping. And we've said that, haven't we? And we, uh, yeah, it's it's we, it's uh, proof. It, it's it's uh, kind of proof, not really. She proof, could be levin. She could be levitating, but uh, but um, but you know, she could be jumping. So uh, we, what we really do need a do need some kind of film to uh, to make it more believable. Yeah. Um. So. Bear with me one moment. Just you two talk amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a minute because I've had a few too many ales. I'll be back in one minute. Uh, you two talk amongst yourselves, then we'll finish off the uh, finish off the program. Bear with me a moment. So I'm not sure about you, Hemi, but yeah. I mean, I, I've noticed this before numerous times that girls really do demand attention, and some some do it in 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 different ways. I mean, they're not all the same. Well, she had no chance of getting any attention from the boys, did she? Well, no, not unless she managed to use the power of her mind to just summon so much attention that she was able to levitate and do telekinesis. And I believe this is a real thing. What do you think to um, this case, though? I, I do say it because I, I... Oh, this? Yeah. Well, it's sort of admitting that, ah, oh, some of it was hoax. But I'm, I'm willing to believe that yeah, some of it was hoax, but there was some actual genuine phenomena there, which wasn't just like girls, you know, throwing things about um, girls who wanted a bit of attention, girls who wanted to be a bit special, girls who are like, oh, look at me, I'm not like the other girls, pay me attention, pay me attention, pay me attention. And after a while, I'm just like, I never heard of a pubescent male poltergeist activity like, oh, yeah, the we got children in the house. One's eleven, the other's ten, and you know they're both boys. This never happens with boys. This only happens with girls when they go through puberty, which I do think is interesting because I think it's like this could actually be a, you know, if if we had a, a a real like serious, a real serious scientific, if we had like science which was interesting, we would be researching the phenomenon of why is it that. Uh, children, especially girls going through puberty, seem to exhibit telekinetic powers. And why does that like stop? And also, can it be harvested? I think this would be like a, an actual like worthwhile field of study. But I mean, most people you try and say it just be like, oh, that's ridiculous. You can't prove that. So yeah. I can't prove it, but I can say there seems to be a bit of a pattern here. Yeah. I mean, whenever, whenever you've got one of these, like, uh, areas of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Any time I've heard of, like, some poltergeist telekinetic activity, there's a pubescent girl around. So so what what's up, teenage girls? What are you doing? How are you doing this? And if you can do telekinetic powers, then can you, like, spirit a sandwich from the kitchen to my mouth? Hello, am I? Am I well, they don't do here? useful stuff, do they? They're like Roger Rabbit. They only no. do stuff if it's funny or, or annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, w it would be good that it'd just be like, oh, can you can you just put the dishes into the sink? And you just using the power of my mind, I've put the dishes in the sink. <laughs> oh, that'd be quite. That could be quite good, couldn't it? I mean, you know, if you don't want to be like, ah, oh, can you take the bin out? It's like, oh, I've just washed my hands. Don't worry, I'll use the power of my mind. But you can put it to greater use than that, though. Well, I, I suppose you could. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of practical, mundane things that you could get your uh, daughter to do. All right, you want some attention? Put the bins out. Well done. Here's a pat on the head. Go and get me some money. <laughs> Just take yeah. it from the shop. Take it from the shop and bring it back. It's fine. So anyway, anyway, I'm back now. So that's basically the end of that case. Um, we have got a small, uh, a small case to cover in a second, which won't take long. But um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? The oh, pol oh, the poltergeist case of how it's still hanging out there, not been disproved. Obviously not been proved, but uh, here we go. Was it bullshit or was it the truth? Or was it just people being gullible? Is there an afterlife? 
We'll see. But anyway, that's the poltergeist. What we'll do quickly, if we go on to the next photo. Photo have we have. Oh, spooky. Let's have a look. The Slow Poltergeist. So my office was built on uh, the site of an ancient burial ground. And uh, last week in work, a, a can of Oh, Diet speaking Coke. of... Hold on. No, no, I've mm. got to tell you a fact I learned this week. Mm. Did you know when they filmed Poltergeist, they, they actually used real dead bodies? Yeah. It's just, it did, yeah. To save money. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I found that out this week, Hobbit. <laughs> Was was like um, who's the person responsible for props on a film called <laughs> uh, yeah. Prop Man? Was I it, don't know. Was it was it Dennis Nielsen, the yeah. Prop Man? <laughs> he could have saved himself. If only he'd been a bit later, he could have saved himself some money. He could have sold the sold the props to uh, Spartan guys, couldn't he? Oh God! So where do you keep getting these cadavers from? Oh, well, you know, there's a very vibrant gay scene in London. Yeah, that was where we got his boys, wasn't it? Mm. And anyway, yeah. So as you can see there, the can is suspended in the air. Go to the next photo. Let's have a look at this. What I encountered, my experience last week. Oh, see the next one. It's definitely. Uh, here we go again, and the oh. next one. Let's have a look. Oh, oh, geez, oh. yeah, you see. Spoopy. Spoopy stuff's happening. Spoopy happening. Blew my, blew my head. So there we go. That's what happened. So, yeah, so basically what I did, what I did was uh, throw a can of Diet Coke in the air and quickly take some photos, as Janet could well have done as she jumped off her bed. Um, yeah, so that's roughly it. We'll have a little look at, uh, if we go to the next uh, slide, how the case has now become a, a popular a popular story there's been many many dramas documentaries over the years that, to do with this case and there's one of them there the conjuring 2 which uh, i've not seen the film but uh if you look at the next one there's also there is also uh, another the tv set that was the tv series that I watched. that was with uh, that's that's barry off yeah i'd be the same pet in that one yeah the, the, the house in the background it looks different to the actual house yeah but anyway, there you go. There's there's many other dramas, documentaries to watch. So there we go. That's the Enfield Poltergeist. Very good. What a what a case. What a case. So yeah. <laughs> so if you if you hear a bump in the night, you know what it could be. Bill Wilkins coming to get you. Ooh, before, Bill Wilkins. Before he's a deep voice. Yes, that's that's one thing. Do you do you think the voice thing? Because they said it'd be very hard for a young girl. It'd be hard. It'd be hard for anyone to keep that voice up for a long. Because she did talk for long periods of time. Time in that voice, didn't she? Some people say that, and other people say that it's not like a Ben. Uh, you know, other people like a Ben Trudeau. Yeah, because no, I read the other thing, thing you can do. Apparently, you can use a different set of vocal cords or something. When you have two, you'll have yeah. like a, you have like a redundant set of vo vocal cords or something, and some people can use them and some people can't. Mm, yeah, there is. You know, I, I, it's hard to say, isn't it? You know, if it if it yeah. if it isn't that, if that is the case, if it is the case that you can't use those vocal cords, then she was definitely possessed, wasn't it? Yeah. So uh, you know that's so that's the that's the dilemma we're left with. So it's the same vocal. Doctor No vocal cords. Yeah. Hobbit, you're roboting. His vocal cords have gone. Yeah, Hobbit's vocal cords have gone. Hobbit. Oh no, Mr. Wilkinson's got him. Yeah. No, Mr. I think Morris Mr. has got him. Mr. Wilkinson's got Hobbit. Morris is peeking through his keyhole. Oh, connection lost. Yeah, he's gone. So. Oh, but so anyway, that's it for me. To, that's it for me tonight. If yeah. uh, any questions from the panel, uh, no, I think you've covered it all. And it looks like Hobbit's dead. Good. Hobbit's the press F for Hobbit. Hobbit's dead. Right. Okay. Then. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna sign out. No problem. So I shall speak keep an to open you. mind. Oh, you're coming back next month. We're gonna do the West. I will do. Month. Yeah. Well, what we'll do, I'll um, 
what we'll do, I'll do another, I don't know, I'll see what other subject I could do a, do this kind of uh, format on. But if you do do the West, uh, if you do do the Fed West one, I'll come on. Oh, no, that one. Uh, you can you can uh, you can lead the way, and I'll, well, I'll be on, just, on on hand for comment. Yeah, I'll just yeah. So yeah, that's not yeah. We could uh, you could come on there. Cool. Well, I'll speak to you soon. So keep an open mind and keep watching the skies. Stay spooky. Good night. <laughs> night all. <laughs>